We're joined now by Central College head softball coach George Wears. The Dutch uh, getting set to wrap up regular season action Wednesday afternoon at home against Grinnell and then open up the 2011 Iowa Conference Softball Tournament uh, at Luther. And Coach, thanks as always for joining us. Uh, thanks, coming Tom. off a, a pretty successful weekend, interesting weekend uh, in, uh, in Dubuque. Rain out. Games push back to Sunday, and then just a ton of runs being scored on both sides. You get two wins. You wrap up the Iowa Conference as co-champions at 14-2. and two. Take us back uh, to Sunday late afternoon in your games against the Spartans. Do I really have to do that? <laughs> you do, uh, yes. Uh, well, interesting is a good way to put it. You know, it was, uh, I've done this a long time, and I have to say it was probably one of the more unique uh, two games that I've been through uh, back-to-back. And, and give Dubuque, you know, as always, I'm a big believer in giving the opponent credit. And, you know, you think back, uh, the doubleheader before us, they played Co and had to go, uh, Co had to go eight innings in one game, and the second game was like seven to five. So, you know, if there's something that Dubuque does pretty well, it's swing the bat, and they obviously did that against us and, you know, put three on the board right away. And I felt like, okay, you know, it's, it's a hole, but it's the first inning, and then boom, the leadoff kid hits one out. Uh, in the second inning, we make the pitching change. They get a couple against Haycraft, and... You know, we're down six to nothing, and to make matters worse, in the third and fourth, they had opportunities. You know, one time I remember uh, it was first and second with nobody out, and, uh, you know, fortunately for us, they chose not to bunt them over and, you know, put a couple more on because now all of a sudden you're looking at a, a pretty big hole if 6 0 wasn't already enough. And, and, you know, to give our players credit, I thought Haycraft then kind of settled in and, and we got better defensively, and, and you knew we were going to have some opportunities, which we did all through the, the, the first four innings, but. You know, you keep saying, okay, we get opportunities, but don't push them across. What's going to happen next? And, and then fortunately in the fifth, we finally got a big uh, base hit from Trish Shermach, uh with a base uh, clearing double to make it 6-3. Uh, to three And didn't score again, which was a little disheartening because we had a herd sec with nobody out. But I thought those three really gave us life. And, and then uh, Fleetwood came in and, and pitched really well the last two innings. And uh, when I started having a little bit of doubt was in the sixth when we loaded the bases and didn't push anything across, and now we go into the seventh, you know, still down six to three, and, and we get, uh, you know, one out with nobody on in the bottom of the seventh, and then all of a sudden everything just took off, you know, we were able to obviously have some quality at bats. Uh, they made a couple of errors to keep the inning going. We got a couple, uh, you know, fortunate calls that were bang bang plays that went uh, for us. Were early in the game, they went against us, and you know, to come back and win that was uh, a tribute to our players. Stick with it and a necessary win, obviously. What is it about a team that allows them to do that? Because you've had some success late in games, coming from behind, uh, winning when you were down fifth, sixth, seventh inning. Well, it does speak to the players and, and the belief that we can get it done. You know, you. You try to get to the point where where was it in the first inning? You know, if we show that type of intensity and so forth in the in the seventh, why not in the first? And you know, kind of the same thing in game two. We did jump on it for three early, but then you know, really didn't put it away till the seventh. But you know, it's hard to figure that out. That's the the whole psychology of the game. And you know, you riding up, you wonder how what's going through the minds of the players. And and I hate to say it, but I think maybe we were a little bit overconfident. You know, coming off the Cornell. Uh, wins and realizing that we have to win two and you go back to the first time we played Dubuque it was a rather ugly game in, in Grinnell but they really really struggled and, and basically gave us I think seven or eight walks that day so you know their players are human and maybe there was this thought that it was going to be easy and you know fortunately we woke up quick enough to realize that it wasn't and again give Dubuque some of the credit for that. If you look at game two just the final score it looks like it was easy but sure wasn't there either. No you know three nothing and then uh, you know it's, it's uh, the home runs usually don't uh, you know, it's a coach's cliche but the home runs don't get you it's what happens before and you know we have a walk and air air and the next thing you know they've got them loaded with a three run lead and kid hits one out on the first pitch and we're down four to three and you know again you just it kind of sets a tone in your mind that even though you know yeah we can probably come back it's just you know let's, let's not put ourselves in this position and it stayed close for quite a while we, we quickly came back and got the lead six to four in that game but it stayed that way till the top of the seventh so I didn't feel real comfortable till we had the big uh, top of the seventh again. We have nine runs in that inning to end up pulling away for the victory so 14 and two you end up tying Luther for the league championship uh, 13 and three right behind is Co. Uh, did the league kind of shake out how you expected it to during the regular season? Pretty much. You know, I think the majority of people picked us and Luther as, as co-favorites, and obviously they, they knew what they were talking about, and I had Co right there. and You know, I actually had Cornell as much improved, and, and they did. If you look at, uh, you know, Simpson, I think struggled at the end, but still a, a quality overall season, not what they're used to, but still a good season as a whole. 
then I think Loris, uh, everybody had them picked to be better, and I, I think so. The teams that are in the tournament, I think, are the ones that people probably expected to get in the tournament. All right, we'll talk about that in a minute. Give us just a quick look at Wednesday night. You have a winless Grinnell team coming to town. Um, how do you go about approaching that when, on paper, it should just be a couple of bloodbaths? Well, I think the big thing is just play the game, you know, and I think our players are smart enough to realize that uh, Grinnell has struggled. Uh, and obviously we got a couple kids that we're going to keep out with minor injuries, and, and then we're going to start our regulars other than we're not going to have Kylie pitch, and uh, then after that we're going to make, uh, you know, assuming things go the way we hope they do, we're going to make changes rather quickly, and we're actually going to put uh, 27 kids or so in uniform and play a lot more people than we normally would. All right, Thursday, Iowa Conference Tournament action opens in Decorah. Uh, Luther, the host, is the number one seed. Central, the number two seed. You each get buys. First round matchups, you have the 4-5, uh, which is the uh, the Simpson against Loris matchup, and the 3-6, which is Coe against Cornell. Give us your take on, on this Iowa Conference Tournament three days in Decorah. Well, I hope it rains you know, the whole weekend and we don't, we don't play. Uh, you, know, I, you know me, I'm not a big fan of the, the conference tournament, but the reality is it's there and, and we're going in with a little different mindset. Uh, we feel pretty comfortable that we're in the postseason as I think uh, the regionals, as I think Luther and Co. should feel comfortable as well. Uh, but I think we're going to try to just play really well and if that leads to winning the tournament, great. If it doesn't, we want to feel like we're playing good softball so that will carry over to our practices next week but also to the, to the regional tournament. Um, you know, I think you look at those early games, you know, Simpson's coming in on kind of a down note, uh, and you've got Cornell and uh, Loris actually coming in on a pretty good up note. Loris in particular, they, they played Luther very tough in the first game uh, at uh, Loris a couple, or I think like four or five days ago, and then got the win against Wardburg and got a couple wins against Cornell. So that'll be an interesting game uh, when, when they play Simpson. I think uh, you've got kind of a mindset there where is Simpson going to be interested because they've really struggled at the end. And, and Cornell, uh, you know, I think they were they're coming in on an upside, although, you know, we got them twice and they went and lost one at BB. I think they and Loris have the capability of maybe not winning the tournament, but I think they have the capability of beating some other teams. And I think Simpson's going to have to kind of right the ship a little bit if, if that's going to happen with them. So I would anticipate Coe will beat Cornell, but I wouldn't be stunned if it goes the other way. And I really think Loris probably uh, will get Simpson, but I wouldn't be stunned if that goes the other way. So we're probably looking at Luther playing Loris and, and Central playing Cor uh, Co. All right, when we talk about the regionals here next week, which I think you and I both uh, expect that we'll be talking about, I'm going to drill you on the fact that you haven't had a whole lot of success in the postseason in the last couple of years. Do you think there's any correlation between the conference tournament setting you up for that regional, and is that on your mindset this weekend just to prepare yourself? I think it's our approach to the conference tournament. You know, I think we've looked at it as, uh, you know, obviously we play and try to win, but we've also been much more uh, laid back, for lack of a better word, because the last two years we we felt very comfortable, especially two years ago. You know, we felt very comfortable. We were hosting it that we're in no matter what, and so we're, we're still going to. Uh, I think we're going to take a more intense approach. You know, regardless if that means we're two and out or, or win the tournament. Uh, we're still going to be very smart, and if we have people that have, you know, I've talked about a couple of minor injuries, or if those uh, are still kind of iffy, we're, we're going to rest kids, you know, we're not going to play somebody and to try to win it and then all of a sudden not have them available in regional play. Uh, but we've talked a lot about that, and, uh, you know, I think w we've addressed it enough. Uh, and the biggest thing is there's a pretty high expectation when you get in the postseason play here. And, you know, I'm not going to disrespect uh, the other teams in our league, but. You know, we've had a lot of uh, teams that go to the national tournament, and I think our players realize that going to the regional is not enough. You're supposed to win the regional, you're supposed to go to the national tournament. When you talk about that a lot, it becomes pretty difficult for players to handle that. So we've really tried to address that throughout the year, and hopefully that allows us to play uh, better in, in, in the regional tournament. All right, so the Iowa Conference Tournament starts on Thursday. Central's first game scheduled for 4 o'clock against either Coe or Cornell. We'll have all of Central's games live on KNIAKOverLess.com. We'll see you in the quarter. Good luck this weekend, Coach. Okay, thanks, Trevor. That's George Ware, Central College head softball coach. I'm Trevor Castle.